Caddis Maximus here. This time with a review of the IMARS combination multimeter and oscilloscope. Not a true scope, scope meter. I've actually had been fiddling with this and actually had a lot of frustration with it. Uh, it's the ET202D. It's been around for a couple of years at least, uh, mainly by the Tooltop ET829. That's where you can find uh, those are the models. Anyway, my frustrations are is they basically suck. The I the uh, they're about they're good enough to do some super rudimentary oscilloscope measurements. You know, seeing if a power inverter that claims that it's a sine wave output really is sine wave or square waves in some electronic troubleshooting. Um, it's not a true scope meter. It's literally just an oscilloscope and a digital multimeter in the same case. But you use the scope through these connections and you do normal multimeter functionality down here uh, if you're just using normal no multimeter probes you cannot get it to display any kind of waveform which is what makes a scope meter a scope meter is that not only is it an oscilloscope but when you're measuring normal probes you can still get a view of the waveform huge issue there I had other issues they describe like calibrating the capacitance you actually have this probe and you can adjust it, it comes with a little screwdriver and you're supposed to literally just go into here, make sure the probe says 10 to 1, make sure it's set to 10 to 1, plug it in, and it's supposed to have a built-in like signal generator for once again calibrating the probe, and you're supposed to touch the center pin of the generator out, hit auto, it has this weird defect where when you hit the auto setting, so anyway, this is the procedure, I've got my little tip there, and I have no signal whatsoever. Even though it clearly states right here in the book, it's supposed to put out a god dang camera, a one kilohertz, three volt square wave signal. And I just followed this exact procedure that they had. Set the probe 10 to 1, set the channel 10 to 1, plug in the probe, and then insert the probe into the center round hole on the gen out. So that functionality just simply does not work at all. Super annoying. There's also, it has, it's USB-C rechargeable, and I'll show inside it actually. Like, the best thing about this whole unit is the fact that it uses two 18650 cells for batteries. So you can just swap them out um, for higher capacity ones. It charges them. Uh, it's probably the best feature of USB-C. So there's supposed to be some kind of, like, scope meter software. So you can plug it into the PC and maybe get a little bit better functionality out of the oscilloscope. But it includes no links to the software at all so you can't get it it's just it's just one thing after another so if I measure an AC voltage with the multimeter function I get something relatively proper I get some high voltage right here 122 volts 121.9 so that seems on par with the other multimeters so there we go we can get a waveform they have like this little preview thing up here oh by the way there's advertising for updating a firmware but it doesn't matter what model you search for there's never been a firmware released for this uh, to fix any of its numerous problems so you supposedly have like all these functions here we can go into and we can go here volt average volt rms Geez, I have to zoom in a million times here. This text is so small that I cannot even remotely read it. I have to have a magnifying glass to read that. But we see RMS 131 volts, so it's dramatic. It's not just a few percentage points. That's a huge difference. Come on, camera. And then the average voltage is saying like four. I mean, that's totally broken. Why is the average voltage on a 60 hertz sine wave so... <laughs> four volts it just doesn't make any sense it's super disappointing I mean that's the only way to really describe this is just extremely disappointing so even though you do have some functionality you know bandwidth limit I was kind of excited about picking up one of these it was a promote it is a free promotional product and this is half the reason I take them is because so many times I am just disappointed and they would absolutely be products I would make a review of and then straight up return because I find them so disappointing I was kind of thinking that they would have it be easy access to the fuses, but no, you do have to pull the whole case apart. These are just some side bumpers, but they don't actually extend to the bottom of the unit, so that it doesn't really have a built-in boot, not a drop protection. 
So it talks about replacing the fuse in the manual. I mean, it seems to be okay inside. We have aluminum polymer capacitors, so those are solid capacitors. Here's our two oscilloscope channels. Oh, my screwdriver is pretty magnetized. So I was looking down here. Oh, the board is set up to take normal fuses, but instead, or it can take both normal or surface mount soldered. And these are surface mount soldered fuses. Actually, I think this may be like the current shunt for uh, amperage detection. You pop one of these fuses, which is really common that you are measuring a higher, amp, you put it in milliamp mode and then you try to measure amps and you pop the little milliamp fuse definitely not user replaceable so this should have been stuck down on top of those sticky pads it actually has a little line to where you can just line it up so it'll reassemble 90 bucks on amazon it's quite a bit cheaper so i believe that is the chip that is driving the display we have a little shield on back and if we look at the back side we have some chips down here we have one of them ubiquitous completely unmarked this one doesn't look like it's been sanded it's either the markings are on the back side or it was simply sold unmarked i think we have whatever this chip is oh i have it upside down here there you go you can just make that out we have this lattice chip here, which I assume is what's running the oscilloscope, or maybe is this the full CPU. And then there's this other chip here. And I saw there was one YouTube video of somebody who really knew about these things. And that's what he had described it is it was just kind of funky because it had a like a modern oscilloscope processor that was like connected to you know a 20 year old digital multimeter processor chip this does capacitance and a bunch of other stuff so it's probably more a little bit more modern of a digital multimeter chip but that's uh kind of the way these work i was hoping that it was more of a, sc a scope meter but then with dedicated skill oscilloscope function and the way this thing is set up it can't display the waveform of what it measures through those inputs. It's only through here. It's just like two different tools just in the same case. So we can see that it's telling us a 50% duty cycle, but you cannot alter the duty cycle of a square wave, which to have a signal generator and not be able to alter the duty cycle, which like if you're testing a computer fan with a variable speed, that's it's the variable speed is varied via a specific frequency and then the duty cycle being adjusted it is just totally ridiculous um the, i just hate this thing i absolutely hate this thing and i don't think anybody should ever buy one of these types of multimeters they're just so cheap that they basically fail and it's just like you know if they're going to make something cheap then just make a straight up oscillos portable oscilloscope without any of the multimeter functionality besides basic scope stuff which already a scope already allows you to measure frequency and voltages that's one of the natures of an oscilloscope and who you know get rid of all the multimeter functionality and actually make it a halfway decent product otherwise i mean the multimeter function functions i should say do seem to work reasonably well it does have some pretty high ranges but but you can find these pretty cool smart multimeters for as cheap as like 30 bucks. It'll automatically detect whether you're measuring resistance or DC or AC voltage. This won't even auto switch when you're measuring AC or DC. Get yourself a better dedicated portable oscilloscope. You're going to end up with better features. They advertise software that doesn't exist. They advertise firmware that doesn't exist. Poorly tested. It has a, you know, they like to call it an AWG, an arbitrary waveform generator. That's not an arbitrary waveform generator. Arbitrary waveform generators generating arbitrary waves, measuring a signal with the oscilloscope, copying that signal, and then having it output whatever that crazy signal was through the arbitrary waveform generator. This has the world's most basic function generator where it can generate, you know, I'm just going to go around in circles. Avoid this thing. I'm glad I got it for free. Troubleshooting power tools and variable speed uh, triggers and that kind of stuff maybe some more basic stuff like you know troubleshooting audio equipment and that type of thing and plus the fact that it's a two-channel oscilloscope and it comes with one probe super annoying so anyway the moral of the story is when looking at these kind of what seem pretty cool devices 
uh, and they just list these laundry lists of all these different features. In reality, a lot of them just totally suck. And what you have to do, unfortunately, is do a whole bunch of homework. Products are, I mean, there's real engineering in them, but I still think they're kind of a scam product. Thanks for watching.